Hey guys, welcome back to Insight Tennis Tour Stroke Series. My name is Rick Oldroyd. I'm the president and founder of Insight Tennis. Today's video is going to be on the one-handed backhand or the single-handed backhand. And what we want to talk about today is something that's going to really help you with your timing on the one-hander. Um, what I see at the recreational and club levels far too often is that players are taking the racket back too far too soon. And this causes a big problem with regards to timing, but it also greatly hinders power. Um, I wanna create momentum. I wanna load energy and create momentum all so that it's all one motion. And if I stop that uh, momentum, I've lost power. So. Let me kind of show you what, what I'm talking about. First of all, let's kind of go over the grip really quickly. Uh, first and foremost, most players um, have some variation of an Eastern backhand grip. I actually advocate putting your index knuckle on bevel number one here, and then the pad of the hand on the other side here. So it looks like that uh, from the back, and it looks like that from the front. And you'll notice that I also have my fingers spread out just a little bit. I like the fact that that grip puts me perpendicular to the court as I come back to contact. And that's really where most players are or some variation thereof. And that's, again, kind of find what works for you, but that's pretty close. Now, the thing that I see at the club and recreational levels is that when a player is playing and the ball comes to their backhand, too often what I see is players taking their racket all the way back to here right from the beginning. So that's a great shoulder turn and that's important to get a good shoulder turn, but it's way too early to be in this position. So what I mean by that is that the ball comes and they will take their racket back like this right from the beginning and then they're gonna come you know, to the ball and drop into position and then hit their shot. Now, you can play like that, but the problem is you're slowing down the momentum of the swing and it's going to affect your timing. Now, if you watch the best players in the world, specifically uh, Roger Federer and Vavrinka, you're going to see very, very clearly that they just do not do this. So what do they do instead? Well, first of all, when they take the racket back, they take it back in kind of like a, a mini unit turn, like something like this. Now, Federer actually rotates his wrist forward like this. I really like that. Uh, so that the racket is paint, uh, pointing towards the court. Now what happens here is when he takes the racket back, you're gonna see that as it starts to go back, it will rotate a little bit back like this. There are some players that take it like this right from the beginning. Either way is fine, but what I wanna really emphasize here is this unit turn is just a kind of a mini unit turn. So. Let's assume that the ball's coming across the net. I've read that it's a backhand. All I want to do is get to here. If, you know, if I'm using the Federer technique, okay? Now, as I see the ball coming across the net, I'm gonna time the ball coming off the ground. So as I move out to the ball, that's where I'm gonna to start to rotate back farther. And I'm gonna time that ball coming off the ground so that I can take it back, drop it, come back to contact extend out through contact, all in one motion. So I want that to be a really, really smooth transition. As I'm moving out to the ball, I'm loading energy. I'm continuing to load energy, and I'm loading, loading, loading until I'm gonna release that energy. So let me give you an example here. So here I am, I've read the ball, I know where it's coming off the ground, I'm gonna move out to the ball, turn, and bang. I'm loading that energy so that I've got all one fluid motion out through the shot. Now, a couple of things that this does for you. First of all, it will improve your timing drastically. You have to kind of time the ball coming off the ground, but you can move wherever you need to be in the court in this position. So I need to move back if I need to move forward, but I'm ready to hit. As Soon as I get to the ball, all I have to do is continue to coil, time that coming off the ground with my coil, step in and I drop into position here, come back to contact, good extension, out through the shot. So guys, this is something that will really help that one-hander. It's going to help you not only with your timing, 
but it's going to add tremendous power if you keep the momentum, you store that energy and you drop and release all in one motion so that you're not stopping the momentum. So let me give you an example from the side really quickly. A couple of shadow swings. So ball comes, obviously my hip and shoulder rotation. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to move out to the ball. Now that I see it coming off the ground, I'm going to be able to time it. So I'm going to continue to coil. I'm going to step in, bang, and release right out through that shot. So same thing again right here. So hip and shoulder rotation. I only want to take the racket back to about here. If you want to rotate your racket this way, that's fine. But again, you're not taking it all the way back. Then you're going to move out to the ball. Then I'm going to be able to take it back as it's starting to come off the ground. I'm going to take it back through, bang, and time it coming back through. So go out and work on this, guys. This will really help that one-hander. It's going to give you more power. It's going to give you more pop on that ball and a lot better timing, make you a much uh, smoother player and you don't interrupt that momentum so that you're not losing power. Hopefully that'll be helpful for you guys. If you have uh, uh, any questions, email me directly at rick at insighttennis.com. Any comments uh, below as well. Check out the website, insighttennis.com. And uh, as always, thank you so much for your time, guys. And we'll see you next time out on the court.